It's not news to anyone that the desert experiences intense summer heat. So how do those who live here make it through? Ever wondered if locals have some special tricks to beat the heat? Get ready as I uncover all of our local secrets for summer survival. Hey everybody, this is Brandy, and I'm a local real estate agent right here in the Palm Desert area. If this is your first time to this channel and you wanna know everything about what it's like living in the desert area, then you have hit the right spot because I'm born and raised right here in Palm Springs, so I've got all the information you need in one spot. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you're notified every time I do a new video. If you're looking to relocate here, please reach out anytime. I'd love to chat with you. Let's get started. Although it's often thought of as a winter destination, Palm Desert is just as beautiful and fun during the summer months. You just need to learn to navigate the heat. Even though we have high temps, we have plenty of activities to keep you busy. There's no reason not to visit this wonderful oasis during the hottest season, as long as there is a pool nearby. Truth be told, during the height of our summers, the intense summer heat seems to be unbearable. But there are so many ways to beat the heat, even more so than in other desert areas. Let's get started with our tips. Tip number one, dress lightly. This is actually one of my favorite things about the desert is that for the majority of the time, the attire is extremely casual. I'm talking flip-flops, sandals, summer dresses, and shorts. It's kind of like beach attire without the beach. Here, you just wanna be sure you dress in lighter, airy clothes. Like I've mentioned in the previous videos, the attire can be athletic because athletic attire tends to be lighter and easy to move around in. Tip number two, the shade is your best friend. I always park my car in the shade every chance I get. Even if I have to walk a little further, the sun does wonders to heat up your car. So when you get back in, you find yourself anxiously awaiting the AC to kick on. If you park in the shade, you will find that it's easier for your car to cool down after it's been sitting in the sun for a few hours. Parking garages, carports, under trees are the perfect place for your four-wheeled friend. A side tip would be to make sure you have lighter color vehicles. Most people go with beige, silver, and white because the dark colors absorb more heat so it feels hotter and it takes longer to cool down. I would know I'm a desert person who bought a black car. I should know better, right? <laughs> Tip number three, bring water everywhere you go even if you're only running to the grocery store. The walk from the store to your car can be hot, so getting in your car knowing there is some cold water waiting for you is comforting. Your best bet is to get a metal water bottle like this one because it keeps your water cold. Tip number four, need to run multiple errands? Try running them as early as possible or just wait for the evening when the sun goes down. It's much more manageable running your errands before it gets too hot and after the sun goes away behind the mountains. Trust me, it's worth it. I personally always try to walk my dogs before the sun comes up because the ground can get hot quick and then be too hot to walk dogs. I must say this about our furry little animals, never. I repeat, never leave your animal in the car, even if you run inside a store for five minutes. Cars can heat up by 20 degrees in just 10 minutes. For example, if the air temperature is 85 degrees and you park your car in the sun, in 10 minutes, the car's temperature could be as high as 103 degrees in 20 minutes, 111 degrees in 30 minutes. So it can get crazy hot inside your car over 150 degrees rapidly out here, especially when it's 120 degrees outside. It's so unbelievably dangerous, so please be careful and be mindful. I think some people come out here and just don't realize the reality of the intense sun during the summer and our winters too. Remember, it's the desert and the sun loves to shine here. Tip number five, you will find that for the most part, you'll be indoors during the summer. In order to make this more fun, my family and I tend to find board games to play, play charades, hide and go seek, movie nights, or simply walk around the mall. This is also why so many people who now work from home have relocated to our desert because you tend to shelter in place when it's hot outside. Our desert scenery and mountains sure are pretty well indoors comfortably in the AC. You can also choose to do activities indoors like going to lunch indoors at a great restaurant, going to the movie theaters, checking out one of the museums, and also going to the newest desert edition, which is the Iceplex at the new Acresia Arena. The Acresia Arena also has hockey games and concerts. The casinos in the area are great for entertainment as well. You can also go bowling at two different locations. So don't let anyone tell you that there's nothing to do in the desert during the summer because there is. Tip number six, 
Leave town. When I tell you how quickly you can leave town, I bet you'll be amazed. The top destinations to get out of Dodge are Idlewild, Big Bear, San Diego, and Los Angeles. All of these destinations are less than two hours away. Idlewild is an especially popular option with beautiful mountains and a big temperature drop only after a one hour car ride. Perfect for those looking to escape the desert heat for a day or even overnight, you can stay in a cute little cabin. You can also visit the Palm Springs tram, which takes you over 8,500 feet in the world's largest rotating tram car ride. But if you don't like heights, this might not be for you. Maybe just close your eyes during the ride. Once at the top, you can enjoy two restaurants, observation decks, a natural history museum, two documentary theaters, a gift shop, and over 50 miles of hiking trails. Both of these options are perfect for a quick day getaway. I also know a lot of people that go on weekend trips to the beaches in San Diego. That car ride is just about two hours, but so worth it. Tip number seven, purchase a home with a pool. No pool, no problem. We have the Aquatic Center in Palm Desert, which is perfect for a day outing of fun in the sun with the family. You can picnic here and spend the entire day in the pool. Just don't forget the sunscreen. They do have a small concession stand, but it's best to bring sandwiches and snacks if you want to stay for the full day. It's much easier to manage the desert heat when you have a pool to jump into. It's so refreshing. We do have more water activities on the way, like a surf club in Palm Desert, which will be a 5.5 acre surf lagoon and the new Disney Cotino complex, which will feature a beach park open to the public. If you're the kind of person that's looking for a lounging food service type thing, most hotels do allow the general public access to their pools with a small fee, usually about 20 to 50 per person, depending on what you're looking for. It's so worth it. They play music, they have bar and food service, and most provide plenty of shade to shelter from the sun. That desert is just that, a desert. But more and more things are coming to our area and making it more enjoyable during the summer months. Growing up here always felt like there was nothing to do, but that is no longer the case. It's grown so much and so many people now call the desert home. If you're curious about the area and you wanna learn more, you've gotta reach out to me to find that perfect area that maybe you're looking or perhaps wanna go see. In order to do that, you've gotta give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, or even send the pigeon carrier. However you wanna get a hold of me, I've got your back when moving to the Palm Desert and Palm Springs areas. Now, you definitely don't wanna miss this next video about the pros and cons of living in Palm Desert.